So I just finished Pariah by Bob Fingerman, and I really, really wanted to start this video off with just reading off one or two lines from this book, like just completely out of context, so that you could all feel the dawning horror that I did when I cracked this piece of crap open. But I would get demonetized if I said that too early in the video, so you're just gonna have to wait with me just for a minute. Please don't click away, just stay here for a little bit, and we'll get right to that, because I promise you, whatever you're picturing, it is worse. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. This book is one of the worst things that exist. It's one of the worst things I've ever read, period. Like, if I were to put this in my top 10 somewhere, and admittedly it's been like three years since I've updated my top 10 most hated books, I should probably do that sometime. But like, if I were to put this uh, somewhere on that list, I think I would put it right above the fifth sorceress. So, like, somewhere in the middle of the top ten. Because th this is a little bit worse than the fifth sorceress in a lot of ways. Like, it's just more unpleasant to get through. But at the same time, the fifth sorceress is way longer, and in the second and third books it gets way more boring, so that was overall just a worse experience for me. I really mean that. Like, I'm not going to do a long in-depth review on this, just because I, I just don't feel like it. It's not going to happen. But this is worse than many of those that I've done. Like, significantly worse than a lot of those. Okay, now that the demonetization time frame has passed by now, I'm just gonna read you one line from this book, and I think you will understand what's so wrong with it. Ellen's body, even dissipated, still held some attraction for Alan. Okay, it was a sort of hot, emaciated, supermodel Buchenwald sort of sexiness, but she still had that kind of certain, indefinable something that put lead in Alice Allen's pencil. Burn this. All Destroy copies. Destroy them. I hate that line more than I hate the existence of cancer. And I have lost loved ones to cancer. You know, if I had a nickel for every time I was reading a book for this channel, and it seemed mostly innocuous up until the narration just suddenly mentioned Buchenwald completely out of nowhere, I would have two nickels. I don't want two nickels. I wish I had zero fucking nickels. Take these nickels back! Okay, so I've gone on a little too long. I haven't actually said what this book's about yet. So Pariah is a... it's a zombie story. You know, it's about these people in New York. Uh, they are in an apartment building, and then there's an outbreak. Most of the city is overrun and destroyed. And so there's just a couple of people that are holed up in this apartment building and they are slowly starving to death because they can't go out and get any food, and then one day a girl walks past their building and the zombies aren't touching her. Like, it's not just that she's getting bitten and is immune or anything, but like, she will walk through a crowd and the zombies will like part out of the way to avoid her, and then they'll go right back to where they were when, when she passes. Like, they, they don't, it's like they simultaneously don't notice her and are trying not to go near her. And then the story, such as it is, unfolds from there. I put quotes around story because, like, there isn't really a plot or conflict here. Now, I think that's a cool idea, and I did like the cover as well. Like, it just has this city street at night bathed in this harsh red glow. There's some zombies stumbling around, and then there's just a girl walking through the scene very casually. It's like, it's a cool cover, I'll admit. And I was just looking through the bookstore several months ago when I saw this and thought, why not? I'll pick it up. Because, see, a lot of zombie stuff does deal with uh, immunity of one or more characters, right? In fact, that's almost a cliche at this point. But usually, it is just, like, one person. It's super, super rare, if not unheard of. And it's just, if they get bitten, they won't turn. But, uh, like that famous line in The Last of Us, you aren't immune to getting torn apart. You know, whereas this takes it a step further. It's like the zombies won't even touch her. She, she can just walk through completely unmolested. And later on in the book they find out that it has sort of an umbrella effect so that if another person walks next to her, they also won't be bothered. And that's a cool idea. It makes me wonder like, okay, why does she have this ability? How exactly does it work? What are they going to do with it? I don't know. Like, even after reading. And like, there's no sequels or anything which further ex explore those questions and explain what's going on, by the way. Like, this is a standalone book. And 
we never find out exactly what caused this, we don't see them do anything all that interesting with it. It takes over a third of the book for the girl, her name is Mona by the way, uh, it takes over a third of the book for her to show up and just that's it. So like even that cool idea, they, they do nothing with it. So the first third of this book, it spends a little bit of time explaining how the outbreak happened, but I mean very, very little. Like we learn almost nothing about the uh, broader strokes of this, like what's happening outside the city. All we know is the city's overrun because the characters watch on the news for a little bit. And then it just cuts forward to months later when they're all half starved and holed up in this building. And that that's it for the first third and some change. Then Mona shows up and then she just like very boredly decides to help these people out. Like it, it is kind of strange the way she acts. Like she's just walking around and then people call for help and she like casually walks up to the window and is like, hey, what do you need? And they're like, hey, can you get us some food? And she's like, okay, sure. And then she goes and helps them and then decides to just stay at this apartment with them. And Mona gets like no personality. She, she has no nothing to her. Like we don't find out or rather we find out very very little about what she was up to before the world ended. We don't find out why she is completely untalkative and barely ever converses with anybody. She just kind of sits around and has headphones in and blasts music all the time. We, we know nothing about that. She gets like the tiniest bit of development at the very end. And by very end I mean like the last three freaking pages. But that that is it. There is just nothing to her there's nothing to any of these other characters except that they're assholes. And like I said, there's no real story here. There's no conflict. Like, these people are trapped in this building. Like, what are they going to do about it? Like, nothing. Like, they're starving for a while. Then Mona shows up and gets them food. And then that's it. Like, after that, it's just them hanging around. And like, at the last minute, they do make one of the human characters a villain. But... It's not exactly a twist, you know, we already knew he was kind of evil from the beginning, and, th like, he doesn't have any grand plan or anything, he just does something really bad near the climax, and then he gets killed for it. Also, there's gonna be spoilers here, I don't freaking care, but if you, if you want to leave now, then do that. <laughs> I really, really cannot stress to you how much of this book is just like being inside the inner worlds of all these characters and just them complaining and just them being assholes. Like, I can understand them being stressed out and being kind of jerks d given the difficult circumstances, sure, but that is really just the entire book is just them thinking about how they're all twats and how they're all assholes. Now, to this book's very, very little credit, that is at least partially on purpose. And what I mean by that is that there is a character named Eddie, who is like the kind of sort of villain at the end. And from the very beginning, when we first meet him, he's just a very unpleasant, awful person. Like, he's super racist and homophobic, and he's just a jerk to everyone around him. And then later on, he graduates to being an outright rapist and murderer. Like, we're clearly not meant to like this guy. And in the climax, again, he is, he is the villain. He is the antagonistic force for, like, four pages. And so we're not meant to like this guy. We're supposed to hate him. So in that regard, it is on purpose. The problem is that every other character is almost as unlikable as he is. Like, for example, there's a guy named Alan, who I read that weird Buchenwald line uh, with, <laughs> with him. Uh, he's, like, a painter and he wants to have sex with this lady whose baby and husband died, and then they have a sexual relationship, and then he constantly thinks about various things that make him horny, and just, that's, that, that's it. Like, he, he's just kind of a selfish asshole who constantly thinks about things that make him horny, and doesn't do a whole lot to help people, except the very end. Like, I gained the smallest fraction of respect for him during the climax, because during the climax he actually does, like, rush through a crowd of zombies in order to save Mona. And it's like, okay, cool, he did one good thing, but when 98% of his time in this book is just being trapped inside his mind with him and him just constantly whining about how unfair life is and hating, uh, just, oh God, I, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. I, I hate, every character is like that. 
I swear to God, every character in this book is like that. Like, I... Out of this entire thing, there's like maybe 3% of the entire book that is anything else than just sitting with these characters and seeing how they're all cunts. Part of the reason I hate this book so much is that, again, I, I like the concept, you know, that the whole zombie shield thing, that's that's a neat idea I haven't seen done before, and they go no nowhere with it, it's not really explored or explained. All the characters are either assholes or... Well, okay, the one non-asshole character is Mona, and she's just boring, because there's just... There's nothing to her. Like I said, there is no plot. There's just a brief climax. And, spoiler alert, what happens is, uh, Eddie goes off with Mona to try and help one of their friends who got trapped outside, and, well, you know, the zombies won't bother them because Mona's there. And then, while they're there, Eddie is just all hopped up on many, many drugs, and then he decides, not completely out of nowhere, because, again, he's already a rapist and a murderer. He just decides he's gonna try and rape Mona, but he can't. And so he just beats her up and then leaves, but I guess he just forgot that he's not immune to zombies, so the crowd notices him and swarms on him and tears him apart. And then Alan just has to run through a little while later by himself and finds Mona, and she like she's okay. She's very badly hurt, but she's not gonna die. And then he helps her go back, and just, that's it. That's the end of the book. I really just can't explain anything else about why this book is so awful. So I'm just gonna read some lines for you, and I want you to keep in mind that the entire book is like this. Like, everything from cover to cover is all written like this, and it is the most, one of the most miserable experiences of my life going through it. Alan had suggested that he document her pregnancy with some tasteful nudes, but again, the answer was no, even though she'd thought it good, a good idea at first. That was a real pity. Her breasts had gone from ad admirable to astounding during those months, and then stayed that way for quite a while. He'd never seen her nude back then. That would have been a thrilling experience. Now he routinely saw her in various states of undress, and it was tragic. Mona was barefoot, and once again Alan was attempting to not be aroused by Mona's sumptuous calves and now, of all things, her well-turned feet. Most feet he'd encountered, male or female, were functional but unattractive collections of jutting tendons, knots, and joints often rough and calloused. Mona's were just the opposite. Their tops smooth and doll-like, almost like a doll- Okay, this is just the author's fetish shining through for a minute here. Mona. Sure, she was alive, but in spite of her fetching appearance, she lacked vitality, her eyes communicating no more than those of the undead outside. Reptile eyes. Insect eyes. And yet, still, the hard-on persisted. Alan tried to will it away, thinking of disgusting things. But what was more disgusting than his waking life? In the old days, if he wanted to suppress a boner, he'd think about maggots and rotting car cantaloupes and roadkill, all of which seemed rather quaint now. I'm jerking off to paintings of a fully clothed girl's ankles. Wow, I'm so fucking great I can't stand it. I am the man. I am the greatest living artist and this is what it comes down to. And I had issues about doing wank wanking material for Eddie? I'm pathetic. Pathetic. I know I just flubbed that line, but I'm not rereading it. Killjoy, he sneered, then swung the hammer in a graceful arc and knocked the jaw clear off the female. Bullseye! He guffawed at the female's hands jerked up to her ruined face in astonishment. There goes your modeling career, Eddie scoffed, well pleased, and so much for that blowjob, too. Although, the zombie's tongue lolled stupidly in the jawless opening between her upper teeth and gullet. This isn't a huggy moment, Ellen said, voice flat. It is what it is, and all without the hassle of pro-lifers to complicate things. That's pretty all, all right. I call that progress. What do you think the pro-lifer's stance on aborting a fetus in a dead world would be? Would that still be so bad? Not that it matters, but we're making conversation while we put off Abe's expulsion from the building. I'm ragging on you. Don't give me that look. He has to go. Neighbors who will eat their fellow neighbors are not to be permitted. I think that's in the charter. What? What's that look? No one talks like this! As they trudged on, slowly, deliberately, he felt the insistent surge of blood into his groin. Yeah like Moses' fucking staff. And here is the final line of the book, you ready? He entered the living room, opening a jar of salsa. The chips were already on the table. He took his seat and dipped a chip. Like, he th the author thought that that was a line to end on. I don't know what anyone would see in this book, okay? Like, it has positive review quotes from both Max Brooks, who wrote the World War Z and the Zombie Survival Guide, and Robert Kirkman, who wrote the original Walking Dead comic. Both of which are pretty good. 
Like, these guys are good writers. They, they've go done good zombie stuff and good stuff outside that. I do not know what they saw in this book, but it makes me question a lot about them. I so wish that I had not read Pariah. Like, I, I wish I didn't know it existed, but I have to live with that knowledge now. Like, everything contained in this book is going to stay buried in my cerebellum until my last neuron stops firing. Like, the rest of my life, it is going to be there. I have to live with this knowledge, and now so do all of you. Do not read this, please. Goodbye. Wow, you, you're still watching? I, I mean, I guess I appreciate it, but I'm not sure why. I mean, at this point, all that we have left is all these names here. These are my patrons, and including my $10 and up patrons. Apo Savalainen, Olivia Rayan, Brother Santodes, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Dan Antselievich, Dark King, Dawn, Dio, Echo, Flax, Karkat Kitsune, Lexi Delorme, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Micaphone, Mistboy, Peep the Toad, Roby Reviews, Sad Mardigan, Sillier the Vixen, Stone Stairs, Tesla Shark, Ve Victus, and Wesley. These are all great people, you know? Let me, let me just, let me tell you. If you want to get your name on here, then consider donating to me once a month. Become a patron. Or if you don't feel like doing that, or you just can't because, you know, you're like poor or whatever. No shame in that. Uh, then just, you know, rate the video, comment on it, subscribe, share it around, spam it to all your friends. And uh, yeah, goodbye.